G'day guys, we've got a optimization question today where we've got to find the points on the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4 that maximize and minimize the distance between the sphere and the point 3, 1, negative 1. Okay, so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to try and come up with a formula that we're going to try and use to optimize this problem. So we're going to use a distance formula in three dimensions which looks a lot like Pythagoras. So we have the distance between a point on this sphere and or a point anywhere and this point is going to be equal to, let's just call it distance or d, is going to be equal to the square root of the distance between the x values, so let's just call it x minus 3 all squared plus the distance between the y values, y minus 1 squared plus the distance between the z values. So z minus minus 1 is, is z plus 1 squared. So this is our distance formula that we're going to try and optimize. Now I think it's going to be easier for us to rather than try and optimize the distance like this, we should optimize the squared distance because it'll make our differentiation easier as we go along. So what we should basically try and do is optimize the distance, the distance squared, because that means we're not going to have to use the uh, square root. We can just have x take three all squared plus y take one all squared plus z plus 1, all squared. Okay, so we're trying to maximize and minimize this particular function. This is what we call our objective function, the function that we're trying to maximize and or minimize. And we've got a constraint that they place on it. We've got to maximize and minimize the distance with respect to this constraint. So the constraint is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. Now the, the tool that we're going to use to solve this uh, optimization problem is one that is known as Lagrange or Lagrangian multipliers. Now what Lagrangian multipliers are is well they allow you to um, take partial derivatives with respect to x y, z and a Lagrangian multiplier that help enable you to solve the optimum or saddle points in this function or this relationship. So let's have a look at Lagrangian multipliers. So if we're asked to optimize or let's just say maximize to start with a function y equals f and in this case we've got f of x, y and z so for us to maximize this function subject to a particular constraint, g of x, comma, y, comma, z is in this case equal to a number, our Lagrangian expression will be equal to, will the expression that we'll be taking partial derivatives with respect to will be equal to our objective function f of x comma y comma z plus a Lagrangian multiplier which a lot of the, a lot of the time we denote lambda like this multiplied by this constraint equal to zero so we, we transform this constraint To look like this. So we're going to take partial derivatives of that. So we've got the Lagrangian multiplier multiplied by a take g of x comma y comma z and this function here is what we'll be taking partial derivatives with respect to x, y, z and lambda. So what our first order conditions are, so x will be taking partial derivatives with respect to each of those things that are underlined in green. 
Okay, so let's get to it. We'll set up our Lagrangian expression, and that's going to be L is equal to x take 3 all squared plus y take 1 all squared plus z plus 1 all squared plus lambda, our Lagrangian multiplier, inside of 4 take x squared take y squared take z squared and that guys is our Lagrangian expression and now this is the expression that we'll be taking our partial derivatives with respect to so we're going to take derivatives of the, the, whole, the entire function with respect to x, y, z and lambda so let's get to that so we're going to have dl dx so we're just going to take it with respect to x. Hopefully you guys understand how partial derivatives work. So we've got 2 bracket x take 3. And then we've got over here, if we multiplied this lambda in, we'd have lam negative lambda y squared. So this is going to be minus 2 lambda y. And that is equal to 0. So these are our first order conditions. So basically the partial derivatives all have to equal zero at a maximum or a minimum point. So then we just go dl dy and we do the same thing. So we've got 2y take 1 all squared minus 2 lambda y equals zero. We take the partial derivative with respect to z Again, it's the same thing, 2 bracket z plus 1 minus 2 lambda z equals 0. And we take the partial derivative with respect to lambda. And that's going to be equal to our simply our objective function equal to 0. So we've got 4 take uh, x squared take y squared take z squared equals 0. Cool. So, so what we're going to do first is we're going to get each of these initial three first order conditions in terms of lambda. So we're going to have x in terms of lambda, y in terms of lambda, and z in terms of lambda. And we're going to use them to substitute into the fourth first order condition to then solve for what lambda is at this particular maximum and minimum point. Cool. So let's go about doing that. So we'll start with the top one. We will move the negative 2 lambda what? So we will move the 2 lambda x to the other side and we're going to get, and we'll multiply out the brackets. We have 2x take 6 is equal to 2 lambda x. We're going to take the 2x to the other side. So we have negative 6 equals 2 lambda x take 2x. We're then going to factorize by x and then we're going to divide both sides by 2 lambda minus 2. And simplify the expression. Great. Now what we would do is we would do this exactly the same with y and z. I'm not going to go through algebra with you guys. I'm just going to write down what you would get. This is y equals and for z. So those are our three variables in terms of lambda. What we do is we substitute each of these into our fourth objective function and we can solve for lambda. So let's go about doing that. So we're going to just go, and in this last function, I'm going to move all of these across to the other side. So I'm going to get 4 is equal to, rather than writing x squared, I'm going to write negative 3 over lambda take 1 squared plus 
rather than writing y, I'm going to write negative 1 over a lambda take 1 squared plus, rather than writing z, negative uh, 1 over lambda take 1 squared. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that all of the bases are the same, which is a nice thing. And we've got, so we have, we're going to have 4 is equal to 9 plus 1 plus 1 over a lambda take 1 all squared, which is equal to 11 over lambda take 1 all squared. Great, so what we're going to do is we're going to move the lambda take 1 all squared to the left and we'll take the 4 across. So from there we're going to have lambda take 1 all squared is equal to 11 over 4. So lambda take 1 is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 11 on of 11 divided by 2. So lambda guys Lambda will equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 11 divided by 2. Cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to substitute this lambda into each of our initial first order conditions, i.e. this one, this one, and this one. So once we've done that, we'll be able to we'll know for sure what x, y, and z equal. So to start with, what we'll do is we'll go for lambda equal to 1 plus the square root of 11 over 2. So x is going to equal to negative 3 divided by 1 plus the square root of 11 over 2 minus 1, which is equal to negative 3 over the square root of 11 on 2, which is equal to negative 6 over the square root of 11. Great. So, Using this method, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to just substitute 1 plus square root of 11 over 2 into lambda for the y and the z. So we already have x is going to be equal to negative 6 over the square root of 11. If we do exactly the same thing, we're going to have y is equal to negative 2 over the square root of 11, and z will be equal to 2 over the square root of 11. And that's for lambda is 1 plus the square root of 11 on 2. Now, for Lambda equals 1 minus the square root of 11 over 2. This is just going to be symmetrical, but the signs will change. x will equal 6 on square root 11. y will equal 2 on square root 11. And z will equal negative 2 on the square root of 11. Cool. And hopefully you guys are able to see that the closest point is equal to this one here, because if you have a look, where is our point? Our point was 3, 1, negative 1. Now here, we have another point which is in the same quadrant as it. So this is going to have to be our closest point. So this is the minimum distance. And this one here is in the exact opposite quadrant. So this is going to be our maximum distance. 
So guys, the method of Lagrange basically involves setting up a Lagrangian expression and then taking partial derivatives of all x, y, z and the Lagrangian multiplier lambda. Once we've done that, we get all of our variables in terms of lambda or Lagrangian multiplier and substitute them into our first order condition which is left over and then solve for lambda. We then use that solution for lambda which we found to be this to then substitute into the expressions for x, y and z at the critical points to find the values of x, y and z at our critical points. So it's a pretty simple um, method. It takes a little while to get used to and you know a little bit of care to make sure that you don't screw up the algebra. But apart from that, you know, a few practice ones and you'll get through an, an exam question like this easily. So, you know, I hope this video helped guys. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos as often as I can. But until next time, keep enjoying your maths.